Hey there, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is exciting. I actually don't know which episode, what our count is. How many episodes are we on now? Like five million. <laughs> Let's pretend like we are. Yep. Hey, I'm here with my brother Ben in person. Very excited about that. We got Brian right over there. We'll just listen to him say Let's hi. here for Brian, everybody. Hello. Yes. Send shouts out to Brian in the chats. Cameraman extraordinaire. He doesn't love to be on camera, but he can, he can use the camera. So we're gonna to paint today, and I'm thinking that we paint a flowing lava scene, something that I've, I've had requests for. I've barely touched on this subject in previous videos, so I think it'll be fun to show you how I would paint a, maybe more on the dramatic side, flowing hot lava scene. I love special effects, so the thought of glowing lava really appeals to me. He's gonna get started painting, but I just wanna tell you guys real quick, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you hit that like button. That helps us out a lot. That tells YouTube that uh, you guys need to see more of this. So hit that like button, subscribe, all that. We got Instagram where we're doing lots of little behind the scenes things. We got a lot of stuff for you. Stay tuned. All right, cool. Now I'm using my favorite brush. And so this brush right here is very, very cheap. And can be, oh, somebody get that. It might be the phone. This is very cheap. I don't know if you guys could hear that phone ring. I was just making a joke about our phone. It was a really good joke, Joe. Good job on the joke. <laughs> Thank you. We're in a busy office here. Okay, so in case you wondered what kind of brush I use, this is synthetic hair, uh, maybe Taclon is the word for the material. And I don't know much about it other than that, but I can find them at big chain art stores, places that sell cheap supplies. And I, uh, I, I get just as good of use out of this as I do, man, uh, expensive brush companies just need to forgive me. I am sorry, but I have to be honest that I just have not found the benefit of the expensive brushes yet. Now, someday, maybe somebody can pile a bunch of expensive brushes on me and say, hey, see if these work better. And I'll try it. I'll give it a fair try. But this this is maybe $5 to, to get a brush, like maybe less, probably less. This one was very cheap. So... You can see the shape of it. I don't really need to say more. That's the shape. It tapers to a nice sharp point for me when I want to do little shapes and I can do, you know, long, long straight shapes. And I like it for the diversity of shapes that I can get. So what I'm going to do first is sketch my scene. Here's something that I haven't done a lot of. I just mixed a gray down here on the lid of one of my paint. paint uh, is it still called a paint can? That's a paint it's thing. It's made of plastic. I don't know if it's a can. <clears throat> Maybe it's a jug. Okay. So, Joe, just uh, so you know, we got people from Poland today. Sweet. We got hey, people Poland. from Sydney, Thank Australia. You. All right. Thanks for tuning we got, in, guys. Uh, we got some regulars Sorry. here. What's up, everybody? Yeah, that's all right. Sweet. been loyal. It's great to have you guys. Cool. Cool, man. That's exciting. Oh, it's always an honor that uh, you who are in very different time zones would take out the time yeah guam we got early. guam chiming in yeah oh, man i don't even know where that is forgive me for my terrible geography i don't know where that is guam do you know where that is ben? i have heard it i do know it exists how are you I'm gonna not... put me on the spot with my geography well, skills I, I don't i'm the worst <laughs> in the room i'm the worst in the room i don't know uk texas we see you guys thanks for showing up sweet all right man cool now, what I'm doing is just, I'm imagining we've got a rocky shoreline. I'm basically painting a creek, but it's a lava creek. This is going to be flowing lava. So that straight line I did at the beginning, I'm going to use that and turn it into some lava flowing around the bend right here. You know, all of my painting has started with drawing. I used to love drawing. And I was just a, I was just a wee lad. I would draw all the time. And so familiarity with shapes. And, you know, not just familiarity, familiarity with, with shapes that look right to viewers, but shapes I like. As an artist, you develop favorites. You develop style, things that you really love doing. And I'm a lover of lines, lover of shapes. And so there's certain things that I just like the look of that I still, you know, one, one day hope to explain but, but can't so far because i just don't know how i just know that i like the way a line flows so i'll put it in the picture so i'm i'm just spontaneously putting together a scene i'm thinking there's an embankment is that the right word we got a bank this is going to be this is going to be 
firm, not uh, hard. I just didn't want to say hard lava. Just something sounds weird about that, but that's what it is. Hard lava. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm agree with you on that one. I, I didn't know what to call we probably it. should have had a discussion today that you were not going to use the phrase hard lava. It's not molten. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be rocks. This is going to be flowing and glowing lava. There's another one for, for you know. I think we've got all 50 states here today. What? Like, I mean, I could I could list them all here, but you know, I've got Philippines, Liverpool, Turkey, but then it's like New Mexico, Cottonwood, Michigan, uh, North Carolina, Whoa, Chicago, man. Iowa, Sweet. California. Well, it really is an honor to be to be uh, showing off for you all. I really appreciate you tuning in. All right. Well, we're expecting you to light up the chat with interesting, even obnoxious comments. We just like the fun of it. So you just let us know what's on your mind as I'm painting along here. Yeah, this is live television, you guys. So, you know, uh, we're really at a disadvantage here. You can you can go ahead and chat any old thing you want. We're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, let's hope that uh, no one discovers the address. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put like an arch in here because I think arches are really cool. We have a lot of these in the West. And so, you know, we have these desert rocks. And, and I'm thinking that we can, we can maybe lava carves out something melts. All that's left is, is a little arch. I feel like I've even seen this in my melting ice in my drinks in the summertime. Sometimes I did a little ring in an ice cube where it melts out fast in the middle. So an arch might be fun. I want some strange shapes in there. Maybe some, maybe a, maybe a, a black half of a banana. Hey, Mary remembers when you did your uh, last lava scene. Oh, really? Oh, and here I was talking like I hadn't done it. No, I did do one other. It's right behind us. The only other lava scene I've done is right behind us at this moment, and so it's a little bit hard to see. Yeah, Joe's head's kind of covering it. You see a little bit over there. Yeah, yeah. And camera one. Well, yeah, we can see. Yeah, that's the lava scene. Yeah. Right Excellent memory, Mary. Uh, very good. Thank you for being a part of that. And so the difference, here's the difference. Uh, that one, I I was intentionally trying to break some norms. I made it pink magenta lava, something that was otherworldly, you know, trying trying to make a, a as extreme fantasy theme as possible. And so this one, I'm going to try to make this like your typical glowing red hot lava that we would expect to see. I want distance. Every picture I paint, I tend to like distance. You know, I haven't painted a picture yet where I didn't want lots of depth. So I'm going to put distant mountains. I mean, speaking of distance, like Germany is pretty far away here, and we're tuning in from there. Oh, so Alaska, right. oh. Florida, Washington, uh, UK again. We got Turkey from a few places. Oh, England. Nice. That's the best. Love hearing love from it. you guys. I Keep love it. Keep shouting out. We love hearing from you. I feel good about this. You know, I have hope that when America falls, I'm going to have friends in other places. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're having troubles here right now. I don't know if you and other places are, are feeling like your country's in trouble a little bit, but I'm starting to feel that way here. <laughs> All right. Let's go like this. I like the way this looks. I'm going to put some lava dropping down right here, and then we're going to put color on this on this picture add some excitement to it yeah we're we're definitely uh mary we're definitely making some shoe eating yeah, lava nice. as you put it that is definitely the type of lava we're making today look this is a little this is cascading i normally do cascading water and i do them on these little horizontal bars like so but this is lava this is crazy i'm gonna put little rivers flowing down like this from these different places okay time to add color i'll think better in color from here on out because my pictures get real busy that means it's time to stop i just needed i just needed a good starting point you know and i, and I really feel like here here's here's something that i want to change this is why it's valuable to do a plan you can visualize it see the composition i want this to go off the left side i want to choose which side it's going off if i choose the left side because i don't want it to be I don't want it to be right in the center. There's something weird about putting things right in the center. It's, it demands all the attention of the picture, all of it. And, and it's, if you put something square in the middle, it's like it's hard. I, I can't explain it so well. I'm not claiming to fully understand why that's weird. But 
it causes weirdness. So see, I just offset the stream. So it's a little bit off the left side, just micro adjustment there. Yeah, Jane, that's an excellent question. If there's anybody out there that lives in active volcano land, we want to hear about your uh, oh. <laughs> want to hear about your experience because this is lava day at Mural yeah, Joe Town. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. So I might get uh, checked a little bit if I do some things that are not accurate, right? Things that don't seem like. I mean, we got people that know lava, so. Yeah. So I'm pulling out red and yellow. I just got them on the table here. I'll come, come over here and put them on this handy dandy ESO that I made with my own hands. No, I only adjusted this with my own hands. My friend Cody in Boulder City, Nevada, such a great helper, one of the best, best guys I ever met. He built a whole bunch of these easels for me, and man, do they work great. They're perfect for my studio. Okay, let's get right to it. Lava is, you know, this is the fun thing. I don't need to balance my values and do it do values all over this ahead of time because because I am painting this in parts and I already am confident about the colors that this part of the picture needs to be. So it's kind of like a braid. We're gonna put lava coming down. We'll go this way. It's flowing faster in the middle usually and this is gonna cause some patterns like so and Gonna be fun coming in here putting bright color so let's go like this bright yellow and then in between skinny rows of yellow this is gonna be my brightest hottest glowing lava i'm gonna make the angles more and more sloped as they come down in the picture more and more horizontal as they go up there in between these we're gonna be red okay now i'm gonna start breaking it into patches see these patches like this so let's do yellow in here. We want to see lots of lines, just like I'm painting water. But what I want to see is very skinny yellow patches that are dividing these splotches of red. And I'm, a, I'm going to put black on top of these red patches to create the feel that I'm after of this flowing lava. So let's just start right in on this. I'm going to get this while it's still wet. One of my favorite things to do is work. Wet on wet, that means wet paint on still wet paint. It's not going on dry paint. And this allows me to mix it and, you know, just just uh, much more easily. I can mix it like it's oil-based paints, but I have to work fast. It takes, it takes a lot of practice to paint that way. All right, so let's put some yellow streaks. Just get a few of them in there. I can always paint more. It's just paint. We can paint over paint. So I don't need to... Pretend like it needs to be perfect or anything, but we just want the look. So if you want the look of a flowing stream, then this, this slight angle here is really helpful for that. That slight tilt toward the, down toward the middle. The middle is where the current is typically flowing fastest. Okay, let's put some here. Oh, I should have gone to the black. I shouldn't have done red yet. No, we'll put it on nice and heavy so it stays. So I'll angle this. I'll angle this down toward the middle as well. So here, I just kind of blast this with my yellow like this. It's going to be real fun putting the black on top of this. It's not going to look that great, though, if I don't have plenty of red wherever, wherever I want the black. So I have to first hit it with red. Okay, so see that red? I'm now very much more carefully calculating where I'm going to put my cracking apart areas that are going to have black on them. It makes that noise when it cracks. We're going to put some, some bursting bubbles of volcanic goo coming out of this too. That'll be fun. Extra goo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll have time to put some kind of a creature. Do you, uh, do, Noletta wants to know, do you prefer a certain brand of house paint? Well, uh, from time to time, I do. Right now, this is the Duration brand. This this red that I'm putting on, is it? I think it is. Duration and Emerald are two lines of paint that come from Sherwin-Williams. And the... The, the thickness of it feels more similar to the tubes of paint that you might get in an art store to me. 
and they don't skin all over on the top as badly. So you know how when you use wall paint, you'll get that rubbery skin on top, which can be really annoying when you're trying to dip into it over and over, do something more artistic. And so this paint I like for not doing as much of that. It, it seems to just get thicker all together as it dries and handle a little bit more like, like paint in a tube at the same time. I like the texture of it. And it's it's also expensive because it dries with a with a more durable hard finish. But they don't sponsor me. I'm not committed to always using that brand. It just tends to be one of my favorites at the time. I will gladly disown them if they make a bad product. Yeah, do you recommend a certain brand? Uh, nope. People are people are eager to get exactly what you are using. Yeah, that's it. Sherwin Williams duration is what I'm using for these. The uh, interior is fine to use if you're just working on canvas or or working on a on a uh, interior project. You wouldn't want to use the. Just make sure you get specifically interior or exterior for your project. But are you convinced that you need to have this kind of paint or what? No, no, no. You can do all any any kind of paint. This, this is just a favorite. It's just a preference. I definitely could go over to a different store, grab a different paint, and have just as good of a, a picture if we were counting what really mattered. Yeah, Mary says that uh, uh, when the lava hits the ocean, um, sometimes you can get these uh, really thin, stretched out strands called oh, that's cool. called uh, Pele's hair, apparently. Really? There's yeah, a there's, there's, a, oh, there's okay. a phenomenon. I'm going to get schooled on explanations. This is not my this is not my familiar uh, subject to paint, so I'm not going to be able to talk science about lava at all. <laughs> you know, but I can talk. I can talk about motion and how things move and crack apart. There is a very familiar pattern at play here that helps me to get a more believable texture on this lava. And remember I mentioned it's kind of like a braid where the middle's flowing faster, so it bends it in this way, but then it breaks apart and, and the these bright orange lines in between these are offset. They don't make complete smiles across the whole thing. You'll see as I progress that they'll they'll come in like my fingers are doing, you know, and that specific pattern is just common. It's not all there is by a long shot. You know, there's always exceptions. Logician says you're doing a bang up job, Joe. Hey, all right. I'm assuming that's all right. Bang up job. <laughs> I hope I'm not thinking for and uh, Christoph has learned a ton from you. Wants hey, to cool. let you know how thankful they are. I appreciate, appreciate that. That's cool. So how do you get that? Uh, Mustafa's got an interesting question here. How do you get the bright colors? You know, how does the real saturated brightness that you oh, get? I just, you know, paint is, most paint that I've seen at stores is already nice and bright. I just didn't add white, if you remember. I mean, think about how many times you've added white to try to brighten up your colors. That takes color away. It's like adding black or white uh, or gray, I should say. Uh, it, it's like adding uh, gray because it takes away it's just a light gray that's what a white is and it takes away color so what I need to do especially if I know I'm going to be working with black then I need to use my primaries as they are it also helps that I'm working with with a lighter yellow this is a tiny tiny difference this yellow's on the bright side it's on the lighter it's not like a cadmium yellow that's on more orangey but Honestly, I don't think that's the reason. I probably am leading you astray if I make you think that's why these colors look good. It's just because I don't have white. I let them be primaries, and then I use very dark shadows. So here's a fun thing to do. Once you have some black in there, we can put little bits of white on top of that. And the black already has red mixed with it, so you get this. See how that makes kind of a purpley color? We're going to get that color on top of this. And I just think that looks so cool to get just little bits because we're getting the soft light maybe from a sky, maybe from, yeah, maybe skylight, whatever light is above. But I don't want a lot. A little bit goes a long way because we want to keep it dark so that the, the red and the yellow look as illuminated as possible. I want to make sure we get that in there. So let's do this. Put some... Put some white on this. I want to leave some black, though. Notice I'm not getting rid of the black. It's just little bits of the white, and I might be overdoing it. We'll see. We'll see. As long as it's dark enough that I have that brighter color on my red and yellow, just little touches of this. 
I'm just using my painting as a palette right here, just going back down to this lot there. Wherever I've got black, I just do a little, this dab I'm doing is just a little frowny shape. I, I push against the long end of that paintbrush and it just creates that shape for me. Okay, so there we go. We've got the look of lava in motion. Now, my goal is to get this to look a little less mathematically structured. You know, it's, it's a little bit too predictable. It's in the, like this perfect V shape. I'm gonna try to bend it around a bit. So as I progress, maybe I will, will not make it quite as evenly spaced. All right, let's go in here, add yellow. And we're gonna add lots of red on top of that. Let's go like this. Red here, it's gonna flow down this way, flow down this way, like this. Then it's gonna go like this. And we wanna make it come off of these curves. See these curves I made? Like this, I wanna make sure that I have, have these, uh, these shapes looking like they're hitting that and then kind of coming off of it this way, like tree branches. Okay, now I'm gonna stagger it. Instead of working in rows, let's switch it up. Let's put the red here. See how I have a red? Let me get it, get it a little bit easier to see here. So I have my red. Michael says, that's looking dope already. Hey, all right, thanks for the encouragement, Michael. I appreciate that. And shouts to New Zealand real quick too. Hey, all right. See you, New Zealand. You are on Party the rock and roll. other side of the globe <laughs> from us. Exact, this is a big, big world and we're connected on opposite sides of the sphere. That's pretty yeah, cool, pretty I think. Cool. Yeah, there is an addictive, an addictive quality to this. You know, knowing that you're doing something that is, that we're sharing time with people across the seas. That's fun. Okay, so I'm following the same patterns, but I just want I just want you to notice you can use this pattern all over the place. You know, when you're doing flowing water, when you're doing breaking dirt or lava, we've got a we've got a line here, a line here. They're going this way, but instead of continuing this all the way to the shore like I did with all these, I'll go I'll put them in between just like I did that example with my finger. So I didn't know how to call it staggered offset. No, I don't know. I don't know the word for it. Mustafa's saying we're making an earth sandwich. An earth. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I think like we that. got some creative people in the room. Right, but I like that. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Never would have thought of that myself. Okay. All right. I've got plenty of red in there. Time to put some black before it dries. So let's go like this. Grab little bits of black. And I'm going to push against the pointy part of the brush to get this shape that I like. It's just a technique that I enjoy using to, to get this shape. It just needs to be red enough. If I have too much yellow, you'll see it start to look a bit on the green side. So I just have to be sure that I have enough red that these black areas don't turn green. Like this, we're gonna go in here, go in here, put black. Anywhere I've got red, it's a safe place to put some, put some black. Let's go like this. And I could use a little bit you know, now that I think about it, I could use a little bit less of the yellow as I get near the edge because maybe that is not as hot near the edge. It's not flowing as fast. Uh, and so maybe it's, it uh, sits a little bit longer in the same spot and cools a bit. And so I'm just thinking through it, just like a stream, just like a babbling brook. Okay. A babbling brook of lethally molten lava. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We are going to make this babbling a little bit. We want to put some, we want to put some motion in this thing. So we'll make sure that we include some of that too. So uh, Joe, you're uh, you're you're better than Netflix, is what MJ is saying. What? They, now that's a compliment. If I ever heard it, I don't think I deserve that one, buddy. But thank you very much. Thank you. Better than Netflix. I'm going to tell my wife. <laughs> tell you what, I told you I was right. I, I am you. awesome. Uh, she, she's awesome. She's she's a huge encouragement all the time. I'm making a joke. Okay. Let's go like this. And put a little bit of white on top of the black. We're going to go. You know, I think that it's a lot of bang for your buck. You know, this this is what, uh, this is the second time I've used this reference today. Ben, ben calls it flash bang photography. You know, flash bang. In, in uh, Hollywood, 
right? This this is when you're just trying to just do your best trick as fast as possible to get people to look. So the delivery of doing a special effect, like molten lava flowing, you know, it's a light. It's it's making something glow. So, it's, uh, so I'm, I'm using a cheat code. We talked about cheat codes. This is one of those cheat codes, how to get translucent glowing lava with just a couple colors. This is the pattern. That's right. Joe's cheat codes. It's a cheat code. We're going to make a section called that. I liked it so much when somebody said I must be using cheat codes or something. Yeah, what do you guys think about that? Should we uh, should we make a reference for you guys called Joe's Cheat Codes? Yeah, that'd be cool. Man. You guys remember like Contra back in the day, the eighties? Oh man, uptown left on TV like, sorry, yeah. What is it? What was that code? Yeah, man, cheat codes. Those are those yeah. are awesome to have. Yeah, nice. Okay, I don't think I want to do this exact pattern everywhere, but I'm enjoying the way it's looking, and I'm and I'm really enjoying. You know, putting this picture together, just, you know, one spot building out. This is fun. You know, this is like, it's like building with Legos, right? You know the parts, you know what they do, you know uh, why they are the colors. And this is liberating. And that's why I feel like it's cheat codes, because I don't need to visualize the whole picture and feel my way through it. I don't need to guess. But there's a pattern that is faithful to deliver the results. And I just keep on using that pattern. So I, I thought it was, I thought it was just very clever that somebody had accused me of using cheat codes in a video one day. You must be using cheat codes or something. Yeah, Leanne has a has a notepad full of Joe notes. What? Really? That's <laughs> yeah. nice. That's awesome. I do give out notebooks at my workshops. We haven't done a workshop in ages, but I give out notepads. But I'm not a note taker, and so you know I I don't tell people to take. Take well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be hated by the people that have come to my workshops because I did say take notes, but I'm realizing that I'm not a note taker, and sometimes it just really doesn't help. It doesn't help everybody. Hey, T. Broadhurst is wondering about creating glow. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to be creating some glow on this thing. That's it. The way I make this lava look like it's glowing and not like it's just pasty red paint. Is this exact effect so so to create glow is the specific effect of things of trans there so there's different kind let's back up to different kinds of glow okay there so you, you could mean different things when you say glow well like the lava is uh, a light source you know it's yeah kind of right glowing. so when light is coming from within something this is a kind of glow effect it's glowing from within so this is different than, for instance, making the moon glow. The moon, you want it to look like light. You want it to look, we would say the moon is glowing bright. You know, we could say that. But it's not the same kind of glowing as something where you see light coming from inside of the object. So specifically right now what I'm doing is the effect of something looking like light is coming from the object itself. So as it gets brighter, it moves toward the yellowest part of the spectrum. So the red becomes more orange as it gets brighter and yellow at its very brightest. That pattern is all over the planet in things that are that are glowing, producing light, or, or that just have light passing through them. The effect of translucency or burning hot things like this, where as it gets as it gets brighter, it also moves toward yellow. And you can rely on this effect over and over and over to produce the look of a glow instead of just a color. And if I flip-flopped it, you would see what I meant right away. You know, you'd see it would, it would stop having its glow right away if I didn't use the colors in this order. So my first step was putting the brightest color on it was the yellow. Then I moved to the red because I was making it move away from the yellow as it got darker. I was, I was just doing it backwards. And so I worked from the brightest to the darkest, least yellow color, which means that would be moving toward, if you went all the way to the other end of the spectrum, starting from yellow, you'd end at purple. So I like to say it's moving toward the violet as it gets darker, moving toward the yellow as it gets brighter. So a very reliable effect. All right, now I'm gonna make this kind of dropping down. So. So the way I'll make this dropping down now is I'll start bending these lines this this way, like this. So I'm going to curve those down just a bit. So let's take our red and yellow again. Go like this. 
red. Here's a, here's a spot I can just build off of. We'll take this here and go over and down. We're going to go down like that, make it drop and off. We'll put yellow right in the middle of it. Put some glowing, glowing lava there. Lines are very powerful things in a drawing or painting. You know, it's hard to ignore a line. Very hard. So you put them in a, a picture, you can create depth with, with lines that like this that say this is dropping down. So just curving each one of these down. See this pattern right here? And make it like it's just kind of falling off the edge a little bit as it approaches the end here. Let's put yellow everywhere. I put red. We'll put dabs of yellow. Like this. Okay, we'll put some in there. I'm trying not to make it too... You know, my, my hang-up is I, I, ended, I identify these effects as patterns. But sometimes I get so caught up with the pattern, the whole picture just looks very patterned, looks very predictable, and I lose my, my organic look. I don't feel like I'm a greater artist than any of you, really. I have a passion for finding the answer, finding the pattern, using it, proving it having freedom to create what's in my imagination. So I just spent all my energy finding that. And I still run into composition problems, creativity problems, but at least I have these great tools. I have the cheat codes. It's like, I don't need to solve the whole video game. I got the code. I'm gonna warp to level three. That's right, <laughs> dude, with all the weapons too. <laughs> there you go. With unlimited yeah. paint ammo. That's it, that's it right there. Okay, now we've got that flowing down. Let's put some black on the reddest spots, just wherever it's the most red. Put it there, put it here. Let's get a big glob of red and just, or a black, I mean, and just put it right here. Just glob this thing black. Yeah, now I've got a place to grab black from. We'll put it right here, right here. Just where I have the more, the more red areas. It levels out as it goes to the side here, and that's what causes it to look like it's dropping off of some kind of a, a bend here. Is that it levels out here, but then it drops down right here. And go like this. Put some on this red area. This is so fun, you know, just just seeing the effect come to life. Seeing every brush stroke make something is a good feeling. I'm not going to lie. I'm not bragging about my work. You know, I didn't invent this pattern. It's what existed. I, I just, you know, I just came upon it and said, I'm going to use that. And so it's very satisfying to see, to see the uh, pattern doing the work for me. I'm like, yes, yes, that's what I want. Cool, cool. It's dropping down right here. We got, we got motion on our lava. I'm going to put white, a little bit of white here. Actually, this might be a good place to do less of that white. When I when I do water, wherever it's dropping off of like a cliff, I'll darken those colors because it's not catching the reflection of the sky as much. It's facing straight forward. So maybe that's a good idea here as well. Less white on that lower part of it like that. So maybe I won't do that white right there. Maybe I won't have that. We'll just put it up up in here, but we'll leave this nice and dark. Dark right there, dark right here. Oh, look, we got lots of dark black right there. Let's just make this a big spot. It's good to have an anomaly or two in your picture, you know, for that same reason I was talking about. I, I don't love the way it looks when when you can uh, predict the rest of the picture based on one, what one little block looks, looks like. So we want some I'm less predictable, unexpected little. Sub so Stanley, Malaysia, we got in the building today. Malaysia, Joe. Wow, cool. Another place to visit. Put it on the bucket list. Yeah. In my dreams, I, I travel the world. I meet people that teach me about ways of life I've never known. And we do art together and make friends and have a good time. <laughs> That's my dreams. It's not a bad dream. No, no, it doesn't sound too bad like that. All right, I'm gonna put more right down in this corner. We'll just we'll just get this. We might as well. We're kind of doing a, a left, right, top to bottom method on this, just building it out piece by piece. Maybe less yellow here. Maybe it's cooling off. 
So I don't need as much of the bright yellow because it's closer to the edge. So let's just grab the black, put it in a few spots like this. And you know, the, the red beads up, it, it uh, is real heavy where you see those red stripes. It beads up right there. And that helps me to get these interesting red lines a lot more easily. Is, is that it just beads up and makes it makes a line for me. Okay, we do that. Put just a touch of the of the white on that. Let's put our extra white right there. And just do little scribbles. I start at the top, just so you know, I find a black section like this, and I put the white right near the top of that one little clump. And maybe I'll separate it into multiple little clumps as I work. Mm -hmm. Like this. Put some up in here. See right along the top. Just a little bit. <clears throat> now you could just I, I I don't know that you would be able to to see all of this white I'm putting in in, in like a photograph of real lot. I, it's just an effect that I think looks super cool. So I so I put it in there. But you can see the effect even before I put that white. To me, the white just kind of puts it over the top. It's a, it's a nice, nice little bit of extra that I like. Okay, now I'm gonna put, let's just put the edge. We need the edge of this stream in here. So let's put some red, put some red. I don't know if I wanna do yellow in here, maybe the tiniest bit. And my colors are mixing like crazy. My black's getting in my red and yellow. It, it really just doesn't matter that much. It's just not a big deal. I, I get areas that are more, more saturated, areas that are less saturated. But the trick to getting that real bold color is, like I said earlier, just don't add white to it. And just use the black to make that color look brighter. Use the black. You can always shine a brighter light on a picture if you want it to look like it's more brighter. Okay. There, now we got some lava flowing up there. Now I'll just put some black, some black stripes. We'll create some perspective in here. See, just little teeny tiny black stripes going across like this. This is this is so fun how similar this is to painting waves. It's just very similar to painting, painting other things. I, I love connecting patterns, seeing patterns that are shared across multiple subjects. So have you uh, have you spent much time researching lava? Is that how you ended up so good? Uh, just, just looking at pictures on Google. I've never actually seen a real volcano. I would love to. Man, that would be amazing. Volcano painting workshop in Hawaii. Man, let's do it. Let's put it on the calendar. I would like to do that. I haven't, but but uh, you know, this is a pattern. When I see a picture of something. I'll see a pattern that I've seen on a million other things, and I'll understand what's what I'm looking at. I'll understand what's happening. Doesn't mean I don't get things wrong. You know, I, I'm sure that somebody who's real familiar with lava will be able to include things in there that I'm unaware of. But for me, it's exciting to capture this basic basic effect. Hey, so Ty is wondering, how do you know when to stop with the detail? Oh, well. When it's no longer fun, that's one option, okay? <laughs> Let's not lump them all together like they ought to be there. So that's one good reason it's not fun anymore. Another good reason is you've, you've given the message, it's done its job. More detail is not improving anyone's experience. There is a point when more detail is not making the picture more interesting. It's, it's, it actually can make a picture less interesting. So once, once I've shown that this is a distant bank, for in instance, anything in excess of that may be overdoing the detail because there's nothing to be gained from it. All people really need to know is this is a distant bank. They want to see the depth. They want to feel like they could go over there on a canoe and meet a dragon. But once, once the imagination is filling things in, the job is done because imagination does it the best. So that's another good reason. When the job, when the mission has been accomplished, every picture does not call for hyper-realistic levels of detail. I would say very few pictures actually 
uh, call for that because imagination is powerful and it wants it wants to do something you know and the more detail you add the less uh, we've used this example many times I don't want to be too redundant but a movie that has too much CGI I think is the best example of leaving little to imagination you know I, I was watching the newest uh, Kong movie King Kong yeah really entertaining you know but the CGI is just way over the top. I mean, every you see everything. There is no mystery. Remember in the old Star Wars movies, you wonder what's around corners. You you wonder what you don't see. You see the puppet's head wiggling around. You wonder what its body looks like. You know, whatever it is, imagination uh, really has fun wondering. And if you take away everything there is to wonder about, they even, okay, ultimate example, King Kong stands up, bashes his chest, you know, in this big kingly moment, he has no penis. There's nothing. And it's just so weird that they chose to show that. Yes, I just said that. But it's just so weird that they would even bother showing a full frontal view of giant King Kong. Why not just <laughs> omit that altogether? Well, while we're talking about while, while we're talking about mythical beings, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, a lot of people want to see um a dragon show up today. It looks like there should be one, huh? It looks like it. So maybe we will. I got to make sure I've got time because I got to get home at 5.30. I got to get home at 5.30. Not get home at 5.30. We have to end the show at 5.30. And so I'm going to race to get this done. How are we doing on time at the moment? If we got time, we'll get those dragons. That's true. If we got time, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. About, 40, about 40 minutes in. I always like a good dragon. But, you know, if we're going to if we're going to do like a, a, a whole scene where the dragon is like standing up, showing its privates, I'm not just going to pretend like they don't exist. So <laughs> I know how much you want to talk about that, Joe, but let's let's talk about atmosphere real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to take it there. Yeah, I mean, People are like, Joe, I'm starting to notice a trend here. What is it about lava? Yeah. So uh, oh, we've got somebody who's actually got something useful to talk about here. They're wondering yeah. if atmosphere is going to play into this painting. Oh, man. Mm, I'm turning all red. I feel a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm doing right now. We want atmosphere because we want lots of steam in here. Yeah, Anna, good question with the atmosphere. Or yeah. Anna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put – general atmosphere all over everything that's in the distance but here in the foreground where i want something to just spike up like this we'll put like steam you know so right here it can just be white the white mixing with this gray and i don't know it, it seems like a little bit of red so red black and white makes a real gray violet and that slight violet color always looks nice for for atmosphere for a real steamy look you know so it, maybe I would. This, this is up to your discretion. I'm choosing to make it that way, but if it were smoke, maybe it wouldn't really have that pinkish color. I don't know. I just think it looks cool. So I'm going to do it. So we got Russia in the building, it looks like, as well. Sat, Sat Bay Man. Yeah. Good to see you over here. Cool. cool, man. We got people from all over. And uh, chiming in, Emilio chiming in from the uh, Canarias. Nice. Where is that? What is that? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's far away. That's where awesome. it is. <laughs> far away. Yeah, we got to get familiar with the map, man, so that we know where people are coming from. That's awesome. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Really, thank you. It's, it's an honor. Okay, I'm putting some spikes coming up like this. I'll, I'll work on the shape of them a little more as I progress because I got to got to do this this background in here as well. I think. You know, it's fun. It's fun to try to make everything a color. I always try to imagine what color everything is, because I think of everything as a light, and it's getting shined on by something. And so, what color is shining on it, and what happens to the light when it hits it? That's always going through my mind. So, as I'm doing this, I could just leave it gray, but I liked adding that touch of red, just because I was imagining a little bit of light from a blue sky turning a bit more purple as it bounced off of some watery maybe steam in the atmosphere because this is just sizzling everything in the near vicinity. You know, that was my reasoning. 
That's my reason as I was putting that together. So let's put let's put a mountain going up like this. Let's go like this. Oh man, I'm gonna get in trouble for that one. Talking about Kong. There's some like Kong lovers out there that I'm I, they're never gonna watch my channel. Yeah, don't mess with the Kong people, man. Those people are <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. I know it. Man. I got I got foot and mouth problem. I got the foot and mouth disease. Yeah, yeah, well, don't we all? Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'll look at it a day later. I guess I could have gone without saying that. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Max. So world map with push pins. Like where uh where oh, yeah. where has everyone chimed in from? Yeah. We we uh, we do that at my house. That would be cool to do here so that we can show yeah that exact thing. Show it everybody my wife would definitely approve of that idea. She's a, a better world traveler than I am. You know, she's been doing it for longer than me. She she was the one that kind of got me into the idea. We had a great time going to Germany. We've been to Germany, visited a friend there, Franco. I hope Franco gets to see this video one of these days. Franco. Awesome, awesome friend over there. Got to see Frankfurt. We drove down to uh, Austria. We drove down through Italy. Beautiful country. I saw mountains I'd never seen. You know, I, I was like, wow, we have mountains in Arizona, but these mountains, these are something. So uh, T. Broadhurst is wondering, you always paint front to back? Sometimes. No, you know. no. This is kind of a fun thing, you know. That this is like playing with a bucket of Legos, I was saying earlier, where where I'm just uh, building it out from one spot and just building it out, covering it as I go. A, a fun method, just because I'm familiar with what the different parts of it need to look like. If I was less confident about that, I might I might not use that that method. Okay, now let's see. I think we need some lava flowing down from this. I think it would be cool to have. I think it would be cool to have a crater right there. This is exploding, not exploding. It's just open. Okay. And then it's going to flow down. I don't want to make it flowing right down the middle of that thing, though. I'm going to make it coming out like this. You know, we're going to have, maybe we'll have multiple, like, cracks. Maybe it's splitting apart. So we're going to have some of that in there. Yeah, and then it'll it'll be kind of oozing out of here, coming down, supplying the rest of this, of this area. Yeah, so let's put some bright spots in here where it's the most, most concentrated, most hot. We'll put our brighter orange color and pile in the paint on there. Really pile in it. And we're going to do that. That's right, Nathan. Happy little crater. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Good, good. I like I like the Bob Rossisms. One of my favorite things in life was watching that guy paint. It was, it was awesome. Okay. And then we'll put the same deal, you know, we just put yellow inside of the red wherever we want that that split. But but where you really finish it off is when you bring the dark colors up to it. So it's it's not it's not done until I get this black and I bring this up right here. And what I should have done is add some white. So here's where this is more in the distance. Let's do it now. This is a good idea because I want this whole scene to look steamy, you know, or smoky, whichever it is. So if I add white to this, then it will cloud these colors. So let's just add some white and, and we'll kill the intensity in the process. There's already gray under it. It's going to start mixing with that. So, so little bits of this, we're going to lighten it up. And all this red and yellow is going to become more of a gray version. And that's assuming that, you know, I'm, 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 reasoning that this will look good because it will be like atmosphere blocking the view of the lava. We'll just have, have a little bit of a, a more whitish gray effect on it. It's not the full intensity of the foreground. So we add that, and then that'll keep the balance of it. Since I have white added to all my grays here, it'll keep the balance of this bright enough to still look like a glow as well, hopefully. We'll see. Let's get white in there. 
We've got white in the red. We've got to make sure that we get the yellow spots lighter too. So let's just mix up, you know, get some yellow and get some pure white, just a real light yellowish color. Hey, if you guys like what you're seeing, hit that like button. We need everybody in the room to hit that like button so that uh, this video goes out far and wide and uh, YouTube gives it that algorithm bump so that we can make more of them, bring them to you. It's really as easy as hitting that like button. If you're not subscribed, get in there and subscribe too. We don't want to miss you for the next one. Yeah. All right. Well said. Okay. Now. I've got lighter colors back here, so that it looks more dis. So all my areas that were real primary yellow, I hit them with white. Areas that were red, hit them with white. So now it's time to get my gray, and I don't want yellow in my gray. So I'm going to get the yellow out of my brush, and now I'll redo some of this gray. So let's come up in here and add some white to it again, so that it's so that it's lighter, just like the rest of the mountain. But we're really going to bring this up onto these areas, let it overlap and squish them together. So we're making these areas skinnier little lines so that it looks like this mountain is splitting apart a bit more. Let's grab white, black, some red. We have red in our mix with this too. So let's, let's squeeze this right up into here. And it just makes these areas you know, they don't just look like, like paint streaks anymore when I just get both sides with the gray, like I'm just squishing it together. See, push it together like that. You see, and it makes it like it's just sandwiched in and they're coming out from within that rock. Let's go like this. There, see, I narrowed these. So we have little, and not little, they're distant. Distant is the word. But I want them to be smaller in order to look distant. Well, let's go black, red. Let's grab some white like this and let's squish them in here. Squish some in here. Like this. Just bump these right into there so that we just have the skinniest little areas. You doing good over there, Brian? I feel like you could just Yeah, we got shots to our cameraman too. Brian over here, everybody say what's up to Brian, our cameraman. He's <laughs> he's holding it down over here on camera three. I just haven't heard a single peep from him. I mean, he's he's ninja-like back here, man, <laughs> making it happen. Yeah. Yeah, man, I forget that you exist. Okay. So I'm putting little bits of this black in here. I'm trying to just make my make my texture smaller, finer, so that it looks more distant. And again, try not to put the black on top of yellow areas. And we'll just bring this down, fade it into that red on this top side. Like this. There we go. Let's bring that color right down into that spot. And then we'll use the white again. Let's use white. But we don't want this to look too close. You got to make sure you, if you want to use atmosphere in a picture, you know, you want to try to be consistent with it. Thanks for saying hi to Brian. Brian, yeah. just so you know. A lot of people are saying hi, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feel left out, man. I appreciate your work behind the silent, the silent, uh, the silent slugger back here. Yeah, cool. Yeah, well, you know, I feel like for every every person in the spotlight putting on a show, there's a whole bunch of people behind the scenes. That is true for sure. Yeah, you know, so we don't want to, we don't want to skip giving appreciation to that yes sir brian does make you look very good joe thank you thank you hazel says he's hired okay now we got some lava flowing down here so my paint dried there actually so let's just reapply it. it's just paint and we'll grab some of this yellow put some streaks coming down here and then we'll put some black in there Let's grab some of this and just go. Little streaks kind of going down, just like that stream. We're going to do diagonal lines that swoop down to the middle. Yeah, Anna busted you, Joe. She says that your uh, your lava you're painting right now isn't that a little saturated for being so distant? No, oh, busted. Busted. It is, man. She was quick on that too. Like yeah. really was like five seconds into it, man. True. I think I think I think they're learning something, Joe. It's true. 
that's true. And since I don't own these patterns, I just noticed them. You can totally bust me like that and tell me when I'm not staying consistent. But uh, logician Tender Stone has faith that it'll be remedied by the end. So yes, stay tuned. Yeah, this, this is an unfinished work. It's gonna be something to see in the uh, end. Yeah, we, we do want consistency. So let's grab white. Okay, we'll grab this this white, a little bit of that light yellow, and everywhere I have this lava. Yeah, I'll just put little bits. Let's see if this works out. I'm just gonna to try to lighten this up a bit. And that is for the purpose of killing the intensity. And we'll see if I can do it. You know, just because I know the pattern doesn't mean that I ace the execution every time. Let's try it. Yeah, let's just do it over here and let it slide the line out like this. We want it to look all steamy, right? We want it to look nice and steamy. So we're gonna put that in there. Let's put the light yellow in there. Get more white like this. Okay, okay, we got nice bright glowy colors. Let's get these. Yeah, now this isn't gonna make sense until I get the rest of all of the all of the foggy colors. Once I get all those in there, then that is going to make a lot more sense, that real grayish colored lava. Grayish in comparison to the rest. Okay, here's my black. I'm going to come in here and put little dabs of it going down in this sloped pattern again. Like this. This is where maybe it actually helps to be a little bit shaky. Well, that's organic. That's organic shapes right there. Yeah. Created by the shake. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just putting general connected paths of, of this dark red-black mix for rocks, and they're just sloping down to the middle so that it looks like it's moving. Just want that look of motion. I might slow down and really try to be calculated with where I put this if, if I was doing a more elaborate painting for a different purpose, but I'm happy with how that looks for this purpose here. Okay, and then we're going to start building the lava rocks around. Let's just put lots of red in here. Like it really is a hot area. Let's grab some of that. Get some white because we need to add atmosphere to everything back here. Whoops. Get that white out of there. Like this. And I'm just going to put a bit more of the color around this this area that's flowing down. Just a little bit more of that color. We have a lot of people from uh, Australia today, I'm noticing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I've been told that I need to come to Australia, that the art scene there is really fantastic. Mm. Maybe... Uh, yeah, Sydney. We got some people in Sydney. Yeah, I think that's what I what I heard. The Sydney area is, was worth coming to to do like workshops or something. There's a great artist there that I've corresponded with just a little bit, Mark. Uh, uh, Mark Waller does some really awesome seascapes, teaching about painting water and waves like I do. I learned stuff from him that was that was uh, pretty awesome. A negotiator uh, ringing in from AZ. Hi, it's from Arizona. All right, cool. Joe's stomping grounds. Cool. This this is kind of funny here the way this came out. This little deal here looks like it's almost built. It looks man-made, kind of. You know, this, like a science project. <laughs> because, because of the straight line, it's got the ridges. You know, like now, now it really feels like we need something up there because it looks like a home all of a sudden. Yeah. Boy, doing the details in the background that proved to be an undertaking. Reminds me of the Undertaker. Ooh, First Undertaker. being has got, got my mind in that space, you know. Looks so dramatic and dark. Yeah, it's just a part of our planet, you know. This is pretty awesome that this is a real thing that happens. Maybe not with all these spikes coming out all around. Maybe I just added that part. So Ed, Ed is wondering uh, if you reference anything uh, while you're doing these. Uh, you're looking at photos, you know how to paint lava? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Study, I study them every time I see them, you know. So, so it's just what I'm into in life is the way things look. And so I'm constantly just noticing things and saying to myself, I'm going to paint something one day. I'm going to paint that one day. And, and I'll take time 
to note what's happening. You know, so I was looking, I was looking at these amazing, amazing pictures of lava just, just the other day, just recently. And before, before I did this uh, a couple days ago, I was thinking about doing a lava show. So I, I was brushing up my memory by just surfing the internet for pictures of lava. But I don't model this off of one picture, it's off of the many, because I'm looking for the patterns. I want the patterns that will allow me to create something rather than just an amazing picture to reproduce. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not what gives me joy. You know, I want to be able to, to create what's in my imagination, learn the patterns that make it, and then show, show other people, you know, show it off. Say, look at this cool trick I found. Look at this code. Look at this cheat code. Dude, we got, we got uh, the ring up in there somewhere. Lord of the Rings, Mordor. Mordor. What circle? <laughs> maybe that's what. Circle K is what seeing I, Mordor over here. It's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now we got to make a bank. I have lava flowing through here, so I got to connect this. Got to connect this tower with my flowing river. So yellow, right? We have a flowing river coming. I almost said flowing liver. Mm, that's a different painting, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you do get tongue tied. Yeah, Emilio says that your paintings are fanciful. That's a that's a great compliment. Hey, hey, fanciful. Yeah, yeah. Your mountains are very good fanciful. Good word. I like the word fanciful. I I've got to look up exactly what that means. I mean, full of fancy is what I understand. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Dude, I, did you see me do that? I did that subconsciously. I did the pullback. I like went. I I pulled back. Yeah. Like this. It was one of those moments where I had to look at it. Show us the pullback again. What is the pullback? Yeah, I, I just went like this. I went like this, and I and I like put my hand on my chest when I did it, and I don't know why I did that. I went like this, <laughs> <laughs> but but I am the kind of person that wants to analyze everything that I do because it's important to understand what's what's happening. People want to know so much about the creative process. I made myself in the habit of analyzing all of my thoughts, all of my emotions, you know. So I think this this was a habit of don't don't touch the paint that's around. Keep your hands to yourself as you move in the paint. <laughs> but I need a distance. I need a distance because you know one of the best things for my work has been has been seeing it on camera because it shrinks it. Backing up helps shrink the image and and see what everything looks like in the same view. No, that's kind of that's kind of poetic and beautiful if you think about it, right? You only get context if you pull back a little bit and take in the whole thing. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. you're lost in the details. You know? Yeah, you got it. That's, that's a good way to see it, yeah. Yeah, so we want to see the way everything is relating to every other thing. And it's hard when you're when you're just stuck on one. That, when I'm close to it, I'm, I'm just looking at this, you know, right up on this. This is how it is when you're painting a mural too, you know. You kind of get stuck in, in little details. This is kind of fun just doing this quick. Just just uh, streaks of the yellow. I'm liking that. I've never done that, but the uh, skinny little streaks it's leaving, I'm liking. So I'm going to put black in between these streaks now. I'll leave those yellow streaks and just make sure I've got enough red. And then get my black just like before. Put black right in here, right in here. Take some, put it in here. Now we don't need a lot. Like this. And I'm just putting it very horizontal in that background. All of these strokes. If there's anything that goes up or down, it's just barely for a short distance. Nothing is, is doing much other than staying horizontal, but little differences, little changes in direction make big difference in the picture visually because it's in perspective. So this, this slight slope, you know, is that, well, right here is a good example. This goes this way, and then it feels like it goes back up again. That's like backwards current. We don't want that. So I'm going to, and it's just ever so slight change. So I want to make sure that this goes here instead of here. It's just less than a centimeter of difference just to manage the uniform flow of my current. 
finding the perspective. You know, speaking of these details, uh, we do jump into these details in depth for the members, uh, the subscribing members at MuralJoe.com, where we take more time to get into all the nitty gritty stuff. So he's flying through it now, but if you are in need of uh, really getting in there and having him explain things very closely, we're doing that a lot, lot for the members. So yeah. uh, be sure to go over there and uh, become a Mural Joe member yeah. so yeah. we can get in all that stuff. And right now it's a much smaller crowd. And so that allows for it to be a lot more intimate. A lot, you know, everybody gets their voice heard. Yeah, that's We're able to get to everything, look at pictures, get feedback. Do all kinds of stuff in a class environment, more of a class environment. You don't come there to just get entertained. Well, maybe you do. So Alex is thinking if you if you weren't live right now, how long would it take you to finish this painting? Um, well, I'm racing through it. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty much going top speed right now. I, I don't think I would want to go faster. So let's just double the time. If I was trying to make a scene like this that I would be satisfied, or maybe even triple. Let's triple the time because I would want to micromanage the details quite a bit more. Details that I don't really care too much about for this because I know, I know that you see the idea, and so I don't need to. I don't need to overdo it. It's fun just to see the picture come together, you know. But I would take longer if it was for my own purposes. I'll go like this. Let's put some more black. Maybe a little more red in there would be cool. Maybe just a little bit flowing on the side of the stream, just. Right in here. Let's put red going like this. Right there. And we'll kind of make this current look like it's cooling off a little bit as it gets closer to the shoreline. Like that. Put some black in here. This is a fun scene. Never done anything like this. Dude, it is looking toasty over there. Yeah. <laughs> some shoe. What is it? I believe Mary called it shoe melting lava. Yeah. My kids would probably, my, especially my six year old, probably call it another world. Another it's, world. Yeah, Nether. because in Minecraft, they, they have another world. It's all lava. Yeah. They're like, oh, dad, you painted another world. Hey, what's up, Germany? We see you out there. Thanks for showing up. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do some swoops like this because I want to try to make some sharp. You know, just a little bit of highlights, and I'll, you know, maybe I put a bit too much white on there, so I might have to tone it down. But what I'm trying to do is create just little highlights of shapes that are pointing up. We have a place right here close to Flagstaff, Arizona. We call the lava tubes, mm. where just flows very similar to this have dried out and just left the sharpest, most unfriendly shapes and big, big, long trails. And you can walk across it if you want, but you're you are pretty likely to get a to get a cut or two on these sharp pieces. So I think it's fun to try to put just a little bit of these sharp pieces by by making a, a light shape and then gradient goes down. You know, you put a you put a crisp edge at the top and then the gradient goes down to get that look. Put a little highlight on there. So Logician Tenderstone has an interesting question for you. Uh, they're wondering, uh, where are you going with that gun in your head? Oh, good one. There he is. Hey, I go. had to. I had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Never heard to. that one. Never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Where's that button, you know, on radio stations where it's wah, 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 wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I was just listening to some Jimmy Hendrix. And we like to do this thing when we have parties at our house. Everybody gets a turn playing their favorite song. And so, you know, we put on, we just get on uh, YouTube or something where we can just look up a song. And everyone gets a turn saying, all right, all right, it's my turn. I'm going to play, you know, and then they play Hey Joe by Jimmy Hendrix. Or I don't know if that's the name of the song. Yep, it's a fun time. So someone picked a Jimi Hendrix song last night. Okay, so I'm putting this shoreline in here. I'm going to add some white to that as well because we want plenty of atmosphere in here. As this gets further away, like this, we're going to just get enough in there so that it looks like we've got 
We've got some good steam or smoke. What is it? You think it's more likely to be steam or smoke? That's the part I'm not sure what I'm painting here. Hmm. Well, you know, if we're next to an ocean and if those rocks were wet, yeah. Yeah. it might be steam. Yeah, what are you more likely to have? It seems like smoke would be the more Yeah, likely. smoke. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to lighten this up just enough, just enough to have my effect. You know, if I want this to look a little more smoky, I might take some of the, take some of the red out of it, actually. Because smoke, I don't think would have as much of that pinkish hue. Maybe. Maybe, I'm not sure. I think just gray is good. Okay, we're just lightening this up a touch so that we get, get the look of atmosphere. We'll make this darker. You know, it's not everywhere. It's gonna be in clouds. We'll put some there, it comes across here. Got our sharp, jagged edges back there. And then we're gonna have more more of the atmosphere floating around like this like that but black i'm just going to swirl this around and try to get some cool shapes no science to this this is just swirling paint around trying to get some trying to get some steamy shapes steamy shapes yeah maybe some red would be cool in here maybe just a little bit of red would be nice There we go. Let's put that there. It's going to get darker as it comes forward. So we really get the look. Atmosphere. So Morel, Morel, Muriel, Muriel okay, okay, has okay. a question for you. Right, okay. What do you think is better, painting a great mural or a smaller painting? Oh, a mural. Man, a mural just gets my heart pumping, you know, because it's big and I have to move my body and I have to turn my head. It's, it's just the rush of painting something big. I'll always be a mural painter. I'm working on some murals right now, you know, just stuff that's not convenient to post at the moment, but it's coming. I got some big murals to uh, post on the YouTube channel as well, stuff I've been working on. Uh, it's, it's such an addictive thing, you know, being able to create something that you stand back and you look left and you see one kind of perspective. You can, you can kind of make it fish-eyed, you know, you blow out the perspective, but it looks great because it's so big. You don't see the whole picture at the same time. You'll, you'll just see pieces, and it, it makes it feel like you can walk into it more. You can make, when you when you can just surround your entire field of vision with the picture, I get a rush out of that. Yeah, Debbie and, and Anna are really loving the addition of that steam uh, or the smoke. Is that looking all right? Yeah. I was wondering if that was going together. Okay, good. And Co-op 98 has a question for you. You're dipping straight into the original containers or yeah, are you yeah. pouring a small amount uh, out? Well, to yeah, that's a good that's a good clarification. I I have bought a lot of paint in the court, so but I poured these from gallons. These are so I'm glad you clarified that. These are actually poured out of gallons in order to not have because when i work in gallons it takes up a lot of space and the paint dries fast so i was minimizing the surface area you know that that was drying by putting them in quartz so now when i paint murals i try also to work out of quartz for the same reason all right we're just putting little patches just for clarification was it the question was asked for an earlier episode where he's dipping straight in and not in a separate container to mix, right? Is right. that what the question was? Yeah, yeah, he's going right into that paint bucket. Yep, dipping straight into that. Right. Yeah. Brave. Not afraid to mix. No. Okay, okay. I think so, you explained it in a previous video. Yeah. Okay, so what is that? Is it, so maybe I, maybe I misunderstood. So I poured gallons into these smaller containers, but maybe, so maybe you're asking that, but in case you were asking, you know, about just the technique of directly dipping into each color, you know, that as well. You know, I don't worry about them mixing because it's such a tiny percentage of color that gets in there. I My brush doesn't have enough paint on it. With water-based paint, this seems to be a lot less of an issue than with oil. I would worry more about the paint colors mixing if it was oil-based when I'm just dipping right into those containers. I'm just putting a distant shore here with some little, you know, some little bit of current flowing this way. I just thought that'd be cool. Some coming down here, maybe put a 
Yeah. Hey, we're gonna go for about uh, we're gonna go for about fifteen more minutes. Everybody, be sure to hit us up in the chat with any questions you got that Joe can tackle for you oh, while yeah, we're painting here. So we're gonna uh, need a background here. We gotta put something. We probably do a dragon. We could do a dragon that's uh, you know just kind of a silhouette. So what color should the sky be? It's going to have to have yellow in it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, let's go like this. Scratch that further off. In case you wondered if it leaves un undesirable texture on the canvas when you lob it with yellow, it does. It definitely does. So I just scratched that off. All right, let's make a sky. Let's just grab a bunch of white. And let's put some red in there. We'll just make like a gray orange sky. Something that kind of matches the theme. That'd be pretty weird to make like a crystal clear blue sky on this one. I don't feel like it would fit. We will put some black in there. Let's put black, black clouds. Oh, we could do like smoke. Like this. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. Yeah, Travis, that's a good question. You know, we've got um, uh, Joe's got a website, muraljoe.com, and he's got all kinds of lessons on there, all kinds of subject matter, um, water, land, um, you know, landscapes, objects, humans, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Run over there and check it out uh, after this video, uh, and you can uh, jump in there, and we've got like hundreds of hours of stuff that you can uh, get your hands dirty in. Nice. That's it. That's where it all is. We needed, to, we needed to have a place to put the more technical things, a place to put the entertaining stuff, or the stuff meant to be more entertaining. You know, talking about intent is probably better than saying it as if it's so. <laughs> That's right, Max. The cheat codes. Go over to muraljoe.com and get your cheat codes. Yeah, that's what it is. They're just cheat codes. I'm just a guy enjoying them, trying to get other people to enjoy them with me. Okay. Some kind of cloud formations up here that I thought would be cool, you know. Like maybe there's some kind of fiery sky up there as well. Maybe some big explosion that we don't see. So we've got all this red in the clouds. It's kind of fun. Maybe it's exploding back there. You know, put some white. Make this a little brighter. And then we'll put black. Black clouds. Yeah, Matt's saying that's looking alive, Joe. That's looking alive. All right, man. Cool. Thank you. Maybe some lightning. Oh, man, we're getting ideas as it's coming together. Okay, the okay. ideas are coming in. <laughs> the clock's ticking down. The picture's coming together. We need... We yeah. need to wrap it up here. Yeah. You uh oh here's a good one. A Abin 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 Dro. Uh what kind of music you do you listen to music while you paint? Oh man, that's one of the hardest things about these live streams. No music insecurities start taking hold of me. Yeah, all he's got is <laughs> oh, just me behind him just hey, hey, yeah, Joe, I'm hey. like, are things going right? Hey Joe, hey. Is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, this this music does wonders for, for my mood. So I like all different kinds of music, you know, all different kinds. There's some, there's some favorite, favorite songs out there that I've got, but it's pretty diverse. I really enjoy electronic music. There's a lot of, a lot of rock music that I think is pretty cool. We were just listening to the Cranberries last night. That was oh one of the yeah, there you go, party. Cranberries. Every possible way. I can't remember what that song's called. The yeah. Song. Love yeah. It. Love it, and uh, that's '90s. You know, I'm a '90s. '90s was my high school days. Yeah, that was a beautiful so, decade. Yeah, the music was a little on the angry side, on the average. You know, and and what I really enjoyed the cultural shift in music. It's it's much more popular to make cheerful music right now. I've enjoyed that shift, and so music that's that's on the upbeat, happy side. I do enjoy a lot of and some I can dance to. Yeah, yeah, Max is thinking with the different types of music you might listen to change the type of painting you're doing. 
Mm, that is a good question. Perhaps it does and I don't realize it. You know, maybe I'm influenced without realizing that I'm influenced. I feel like I'm painting what I want to paint. And so, you know, I wouldn't immediately say, oh, yeah, the music made me do it. But maybe, maybe there's more influence. You know, usually things are far beyond what we see on the surface. So, Am I the only one that is a toss-up between singing and painting as to which one Joe's worse at? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I'm just Joe. Thanks. Where's that button? Thanks. 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 It's all here in the Cranberry song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sing along. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I love to sing. It's yeah, half the no. time. Even losing my voice. Can't think of a better reason to lose my voice than I was singing. <clears throat> you know, so that's uh, Peggy's noticing that you're not blending the sky entirely, and how that's kind of neat. You know that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. I'm glad you like that. Yeah. There's just there's just not time, but it actually is not a bad look leaving. And this goes back to the importance of leaving things to imagination. Leave things to imagination somewhere in a picture. It doesn't mean doing a messy job. You know, it doesn't mean not finishing. It just means that you don't need to show everything that you can possibly show everything doesn't need to be seen you know so so making loose texture in a picture allows people to to wonder or assume that something that maybe is desirable to that viewer and so i think leaving leaving things to imagination is very powerful in a picture and so in moments like this when i'm in a hurry you can say, oh, this is this is a very sophisticated artistic decision. I'm leaving it to imagination. Okay. Hey, thanks, Chris. We hear you out there. Loving Joe's work. Appreciate you giving us a shout out. Uh, we got about uh, 10 minutes more that we're going to do here. Right. Everybody, and uh, it's great to hear from you. So keep them coming. Okay. Now, this is the part where I'm going to start closing it in, doing the last section. This is the last unpainted area here. So I'm just going to make sure my atmosphere is consistently lighter as it goes back. So I'm going to grab my white and red, put it in there. This is a different style of painting directly with primaries than what I would choose if I was, if I was teaching a class how to do this painting. I would teach how to pre-mix these colors so that we could just come back to the colors you need more efficiently. And the painting would, would be easier to accomplish, so I'd spend less time trying to arrive at just the right colors because I have them pre-mixed. But there is a chaotic beauty in, in constantly working from the primaries that I enjoy. There, there's, a, there's a craziness to the picture where you, where you just see the scrambled colors that the primaries do by accident. And so I like that as well. It's just a different look. But if I was doing this, doing a big mural for a customer, you know, I would want to be able to get it done in a timely manner and I would want it to be more predictable. And so I would pre-mix my colors in order to save me the stress. Uh, you know, whenever I want to change the plan a little bit, I've got the colors on hand. It's just more efficient. Helps me with time. But here I'm just painting right from primaries because it's okay, it's a small scale. I'm not concerned about how far I get. I'm having fun. So I'm going real light down here so it looks real cloudy and it's just missing a few pieces. I think one of the funnest things is when, I, is, is when the final pieces start coming together. Some of my favorite things. Get things ready and start bringing them together and at that moment that they come together and then you can see an environment that doesn't have breaks in it anymore. I love it. I love that moment. Okay, we're going to just bring these down like this. Bring some ridges down into the fog, maybe some dark pinnacles, something real tower-like. Yeah, GN, thanks for bringing that up. Um, so uh, this stream is going to be live, public, Anybody, anywhere can watch it anytime they want, but we also do private streams for the members where um, yeah. we get more in depth. Uh, you can show Joe your work and he can get feedback on your stuff. We really slow it down and get into it for you. And that'll be for the members only. Um, That's it. 
if we were to address everybody in this room's work right now, it would take a lot more than an hour and a half. So yeah. uh, head on over to their uh, muraljoe.com, and that's the place where we yeah. can make that happen. You can also get on the mailing list there. You know, that doesn't cost anything. Right. Get on the mailing list, you'll get notifications when we do live streams. Yeah, sign that mailing list. Yeah, and then anytime we do these streams, you're going to be in the know. So uh, we can uh, have you back here again. That's it. That's it. And we appreciate we appreciate the uh, staying in touch very much. Makes this all worthwhile. Okay, now I'm just making this shoreline go out here. We're almost, almost completed on our little layers of hard rock. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the hardest. <laughs> That's hardcore rock, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Sounds so dumb. Okay, let's put some here. Let's put some in here. I like this spike. The eagle. Oh, yeah. Little eagle perch. Yeah, I thought maybe it looked a little bit like an eagle's face. There we go. Yeah, well, it's funny about that is about 10 minutes ago, a lot of people were seeing a face right about where you're working. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they're like, where's the face? You see the face? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Man, I used to see faces in every kind of wallpaper texture or repeating pattern. I had leaves, sticks, dirt, rocks. Everything looked like a face. Actually, I think it's a good trick. Here's a cheat code. If you want to remember a complex symbol, then... Just flex your brain as hard as you can to turn it into a face. Once it becomes a face, you remember it so much better. I do that. I use that trick all the time to uh, try to remember any, any kind of any kind of symbol. Well, you know, I'm trying to learn Chinese, Chinese symbols. And there's a lot of stuff to remember. It's so hard. But anything I can turn to a face. So when I'm copying a photograph, I'm like, I want to paint that rock. Well, that rock has all kinds of little bends and turns. Any little bend and turn, if I can tell you forehead, eye, nose, that's a face. I come back to my canvas, I duplicate a lot more information without having to, to uh, look. It really works. It does. Okay, now I'm going to put this pinnacle going up because I kind of lost that in my sky. It's going up into the sky. It's huge. And that's a good place to put some kind of a dragon or something. That's where we need the final touch. Right there. Let's put these vertical towers. We need something for a for a dragon to come and grab hold of. Uh oh. Let's go like this. Does that mean you're planning to put a dragon in there? Yeah, man, we got to put a drink. We did all this work. We put this flowing lava. There was so much I wanted to do with this that I didn't get to. That's you know? true. Hey, you're making yeah. a lot of people happy right now. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> it's worth doing it. Okay. All right, we can do a dragon. So yeah. what we'll do is, you know, I'm thinking we start with the lighter coat. All right. And go wing, wing, like this. And then we're going to take the red. And we're going to go up like this, down like this, top of the wing, like so. We're going to go up like this, down like this, top of that wing. We want translucency, so as it gets darker, I'm going to make it get uh, further from the yellow color as it gets brighter because I want this skylight. There's a, see this little bit of light that's in here. You know, we've got that kind of bright glow coming from the coming from the sky right up in here. And then, you know, right in here. Maybe there's some light popping through here. We can just kind of make some light just do that who knows why that's popping through we don't know i didn't mean to do that we didn't want that red in there must have mixed the uh must have mixed the red on that wing so we got we got this response in the cloud hey, why do you prefer acrylics over oils joe uh dry time familiarity viscosity those things are what my techniques are built on, and oils are capable of accomplishing some amazing things that, that would be very difficult to do with, with uh, acrylics. But because I've got so many techniques at this point that use the fast dry time, I'm not just fighting the fast dry time, I'm actually using it to do a lot of techniques. And this watery 
consistency, being able to cover a lot of canvas fast is not as easy with oils. Maybe there's ways to do that, adding lots of thinner, but I hate using thinner. The chemicals are, are not something I especially enjoy. So it's just preference, but they are capable of some really awesome things. And I could, I could transfer the techniques over, you know, like the waves on the water, all of these, this can all be done with oil too. I just have to, you know, do some, do some little adjustments to make it work. All right, we're grabbing just a little bit of black. George says, Joe, you're a crazy man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> crazy man with your knowledge. Thank you. Okay. A little bit of black right there. It was here. So what I do is I just, you know, before I went, to, it's just like the lava. See, I'm making the dragon wings glow just like I made the lava glow by making them move toward the yellow as they get brighter, where I want the light shining through. I'm going to grab a little bit of this black. That's why I like these brushes. Get those sharp little points. Okay, we're going to put little legs on this, on this beast here, like this. This is where I'm going to have to turn my brush sideways. Uh oh, he's turning it sideways. Yeah, yeah. We gotta. I'm gonna need some more paint. We'll grab some red. We'll put some black on here, and I'm gonna kind of like I'm playing in the mud. I'm gonna grab this little bit of color, and we're gonna put a little, a little teeny weeny. What do you guys think we should name this dragon? Anybody got any ideas out there? We need to name this thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, we got some creative people in the room. What do y'all think? <laughs> name the dragon. I mean, it's Mordor, right? We named the scene. What's what was the dragon? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then we can name the painting after the dragon. Fred? I'm going to call it Fred until somebody oh, does okay. better than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we can't, we can't uh, call the painting Fred. No, the dragon's name's Fred. No, but I want to name the painting after the dragon. Oh, okay. I think that that's, I think Scorcher, that's really Twinkle Toes, Scorcher. Volin, Flaming Wings, Black Crow, Toothless, Hades. Oh, whoa, we got some ideas. Scorcher. Yes. Dude, those are good ideas. Gary. Nice. <laughs> Morlock. Yeah. Morlock. Yeah, hey, thanks for the second on Fred, J-Mac. That is an excellent idea, isn't it? Puff. Puff. Pop. Fafnir. Oh, that's fun. Fafnir. Dude, who thinks of these things? That's creative. Dude, Fafnir, that's from Max Idol. It is? You know that? Oh, man, maybe I'm the dummy in the room. No, 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 Max Idol. Screen name, Max oh, Idol. Oh, oh that's yeah, yeah. Good job on creativity. Yeah, Karen? What about Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like us naming our band, Bob. Hazel. Yeah, Hazel thinks Karen would be. Yeah, you know, Joe and I. Uh, Joe and I were in a band a long time ago, and long time ago yeah. we decided we were so rebellious that we didn't want to name it um, like just a normal band name. Yeah, we were so nonconformist. We just called our band like you'd call your buddy, and we named it Bob. Yeah. Bob, yeah. It was the dumbest idea we've we ever had. Called, I mean, we would, we'd have been better off with like Cornelius Brothers, something non-creative would have been just fine. Fred the Torch, Fred the Scorch. Joe the Dragon, Lava Lover, Fredzilla. Yeah, okay. Fred, yeah, I don't want, I'm not a Godzilla fan anymore. That movie disappointed me. Uh oh, yeah, we'll, we'll lose the Zilla then. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We can have Zilla. Ooh, Sir Samuel Simon. Those are good ideas, everybody. Keep them coming. Well, we're, we're a little bit into overtime here right now. So Joe is in his happy yeah. place and he's going to finish up this dragon. Uh, everybody, uh, loving all those like buttons. Uh, thank you so much for that. Keep at it. Um, and uh, we are going to. Yeah, I just don't want to. I just don't want to cut this off before this dragon. He's almost. A, <clears throat> it's almost done. It's almost done. We're going to have this done. I'm, I'm just taking the wings down. Now we had primary yellow. I'm just taking it down a notch or two on the intensity. But the same color pattern still there. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of feeling my way through getting these last little veins in place or these little you know the fingers that hold the wings 
and get those now. Now we're very close to being done. Very close. Hey, you take all the time you want, man. This is a uh, this is good television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are we doing on viewers? Who we got out there? How many we got out there? Well, right now we got 143 people oh, in the nice. room. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here, everybody. Makes my day. Cool. Glad you took the time out to watch. Yeah, 100, 143 spots all around the globe, all pointing in on this painting right now. How cool is that? Thank you, everyone. Nice. That is amazing. Nice. That was cool. 144. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sweet. Okay, now we're going to put a little bit of light on top because we get the light in the sky and we're going to put light going across the head like this let's go like that then we just need like a little bit of a open mouth look how can we do this what's up chris myers something tells me you uh what? chris myers something tells me you know a little something secret about the cornelius brothers Really? Is Chris Myers really up Chris there? Myers is in the building. What? Hey, Chris, man. There's been some years. Years since we've seen that guy. Nice. Yeah, and to answer your question, yeah, man, we are. We are. We're still best friends, all of us. Nice. No, that's cool. Thanks for tuning in, Chris. Okay. I'm going to have a little bit of fun here. Put a little bit of fire coming out of that one. Let's get some yellow. This is the quick way to do some fire. Everybody did the red. We're just gonna... Like that. There. All right, cool. You know, like I said, leaving it to imagination is not a bad thing. So we kind of got a little bit of a head visible, but not much. Leaves a lot for you to wonder. Just looks like something's happening. I like it. Okay. All right, what do you think? Should we put anything else in there? I like the feel of it. It's I got mean, a good vibe. It's real happy. It's a real happy vibe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really, <laughs> it's really, we've done a really uplifting uh, yeah. scene here today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm yeah, digging, think, I'm digging the flame. Is that flames coming out of yeah. that dragon's mouth? Yeah, yeah, I just did a few little flames in there. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I just wanted mm -hmm. to throw some of those in. I, I, there's so much that could still be uh, done to this. You know, I, so someone was saying, when's it finished? When's it finished? I don't feel like this is finished. You know, I would like to add more lava flows coming down, coming down this mountain, uh, just because it feels, it feels too simple, too simple for there to just be one in the midst of this complex volcanic mountain range. It just doesn't feel like it's as believable as it could be. It could really do a better job of taking my imagination there. If I just added more of these these lava flows to here, so you know maybe I've got time to just. Add you think that there. you think that dragon might have a tail or something? Some people are asking. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, <yeah. laughs> there's just we got a lot of we got a yeah. lot of uh, cooks in the kitchen right now, Joe. Yeah, no, you're right, man. That's I like that. I like those uh, the input because it does, it is kind of weird to do a dragon without a tail. Yeah, or eyeballs. Yeah, we want that. Eyeballs and a tail seem to be what... Uh... Yeah, well, oh, man, come on. Let's try it here. Eyeball, right here. Now we got an eyeball. Okay. Now the tail, let's make a gray. We're going to mix this on something because my, my picture... Ah, we can use this to mix a gray. Okay. Make a gray right here. Lighten it up a little bit. And just a touch here. Yeah. Yeah, I totally see what you mean by the by the tail, you know. It's not a bad thing to point out. So let's put like a little bit of a belly coming down. Take just a second here. Let's put the head coming down like this, put the belly right here, and then we'll put this going back and So Scott's wondering, is there a best distance to view paintings from? Well, yes, but I'd say, well, it, it, if, if a painting is, if the artist has done a good job of, of painting it at a particular distance, then yes. 
So I guess the answer is the artist can make it that way. So one picture may not have perspective consistent enough for it to matter. But if an artist has been very consistent with perspective, then yeah, just like if you take a picture, the, the most lifelike perspective that you will experience on that photo when you reproduce it will be if you reproduce it to the original size that it was when you took it. So that it takes up your entire field of view. So then when, when a picture is done by an artist, I feel like it typically is meant to be looked at so that your vision is filled up, you know, so that, so that most of your vision is filled up. And that's just instinct. I would say that's on the average, the instinct of the artist to just, just want the vision to be filled up with that painting. And since distance changes the angles that you see things from, I'd say yes. Yes, getting to that place where the picture is not just a little dot in your field of view. However, it is totally subjective to the intent of the artist, how conscious they are of it, or how much whatever their intent was when they were making it. There we go. How about that? Now we got a tail and eyeball. Hey, that's awesome. We are running out of time quick like. Yeah. We're putting a period on this painting. We're putting a period on this painting. <laughs> Putting a period on it, Ben. Put a period, Put a on, period it. on it. Yep, yep. We're just putting a few little. We had mentioned this earlier, like a big splatter coming out. Yep, we're about an hour and forty minutes here. Oh, molten, hour and minutes. Oh, molten man. lava, awesome. Let's just put this little bit of something shooting out of there. I just felt at the last second like it needed that. Feel it. Look how fun that is to just throw that in there. Just yellow. It's just yellow and some red. It just needs that one. We don't need more than that. Okay, let's be done. All right, let's everybody. Let's be done. Okay, thank you for watching that, guys. I appreciate Next it. week, we're going to be back here doing the same thing. And also, don't forget that if you want a deeper look at Joe's techniques and the knowledge yep. and the explanations, yep. Yep. remember, we've said it a hundred times. Go over there, check it out. Um, and we do like to share them. I love to share them. It takes time and it makes the videos boring for a lot of the audience out there, which I completely understand. Not everybody wants to spend 30 minutes looking at exactly how to get the right colors in advance. But if you're trying to make money doing this, it might be more helpful. So there's different different reasons. So it might be worth your investment to get the, the real details of the tricks of the trade. And I can share that with you uh, when you go to my website and see that. All right. All right. Does Thanks, it. guys. We're going to see you next time. Uh, and so next week, get on that mailing list. We will let you know if the time changes. And we are going to do the same thing each week for a while. We're good? We're good. Uh, Everybody have a great day. All right. Good. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to work a little bit more while we fade out. Okay. Just fade to black like we didn't keep working on this.